Welcome to Tales from the Fandom, a podcast that brings a special guest out of the multiverse and straight to you. And now your host, David Ginsberg. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of Tales from the Fandom. I am glad to have you taking time out of your day to listen to me and my guests talk about fandom. Whether you are listening to us on your browser, on iTunes, on your favorite podcast app of choice, or now on Spotify, thank you so much for listening. I've got a great episode for you today. We have Becky over in England talking about her favorite fandoms as well as cosplay. It is a really fun episode. I'm really happy that I got to talk with her, and it was a blast. I can't believe how close it is to the end of the year, and I do have to say I've got a great lineup of 2018 guests so far. I've been recording all this month and all last month, just getting ready for the next year, and I've got a lot of great guests that you're going to have fun listening to. So just be on the lookout on our Facebook page, Tales from the Fandom, or if you want even earlier access to episodes and information about the podcast, if you just support us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, you will get that access. And I promise you that there is some good stuff coming out in the near future. So I hope you enjoy this episode. And as usual, I love to support other indie podcasts. So please take a listen to the promo that's right after this and then enjoy the episode with Becky. Thank you so much, everybody. Hi, I'm Lainey, host of the new podcast, We're All Just Pretending. It's a podcast that has elements of Dear Abby with a twist of Post Secret. Every episode, I'll read listener questions and provide advice and insight as a friend. My own pod friends will even join in and offer their advice on parenting, relationships, and even give you really bad advice on purpose. Since we all have secrets to share, there'll also be a segment focusing on letting the skeletons out of your closet. If you're looking for advice or want to share a secret, head to allpretendingpod.com. And remember, we're all just pretending here. And welcome to another episode of Tales from the Fandom. We are back over in England with my next guest, Becky. Uh, Facebook it actually brought us together because for some reason, Facebook realized I needed more awesome guests from England and... She showed up as one of the Facebook pages I should check out, and I did, and I fell in love with her Hermione Yule Ball dress that she made, and Becky, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to come on and talk with me about the fandoms that you love. Thanks for having me on. It is my pleasure. Um, like I said, it, it's all Facebook's, I, I wouldn't call it it's Facebook's fault, but thank you to Facebook, because uh, it's amazing just like every day it shows me the like the different stories, like, oh, pages you might like to check out. And I'm like, okay, let me scroll through and see what they're promoting. And your your uh, Hermione dress was definitely a a wonderful thing to see, I, I guess, like a couple weeks ago when it, when it popped up. Thank you. I, yeah, it took a long time, so I'm glad people are noticing it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, it's, uh, you know, and it's, for those who aren't, are just listening to us now and eventually they'll hopefully hit your Facebook page, um, you, we went the traditional actual book version of that dress instead of what they did for the movie. Um, I noticed a lot of people have been angry about that for years. And so when I saw like the pink next to the blue material, I just couldn't resist going for the blue. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, I joked around with one of my other guests that's, that was from England, uh, about her love of Harry Potter and, uh, I just wanted to know: is it is it like a pre, is it a prerequisite that everyone in England is in Harry into Harry Potter or, uh, like? I, yeah, I mean, it. I can't turn a corner without hearing about it. So. <laughs> now, how how uh, how did you get into Harry Potter? Was it the books or the movies? What 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 came first for you? Um, my mum started reading it to me when I was three I think and she did the voices and everything and I just loved it from then I think it would have been right after the first film had come out so after a couple of years I started watching the films and it just skyrocketed from there so it's been a lot of fun <laughs> uh, and of course with every person that I talk to Harry Potter about I always have to ask which house are you 
I am a Hufflepuff. Yes, another Hufflepuff for the the podcast. Yeah. That's awesome. Recently, a lot more people have been a Hufflepuff since Fantastic Beasts and everything. But I've always been a Hufflepuff. Yeah, I always tell the story when when I was younger in my college years, I like I always identified with Ravenclaw, but I, I'm totally a Hufflepuff now. Like they're they're my house, they're my family. Yeah, like what's so wrong with being nice and loyal and kind? Exactly. And there's so many and you know, there's so many uh like famous people that have been coming out saying that, you know, oh they're Hufflepuff too. Like I was reading a couple of weeks ago, I think uh uh, the Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson was like, "Yeah, my I'm a Hufflepuff, and a few other people are Hufflepuffs too." And it's like, "Oh, you know, it's 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 definitely the house that kind of seems like like it's it's become more okay to be like, I'm a Hufflepuff, like Hufflepuff over here." Yeah, it's it's nice being a Hufflepuff. Like you don't hear about it a lot, but it's fun. It is, and and as you said, like Fantastic Beat, uh, Beast, uh, New, Newt Scamander, definitely a great Hufflepuff representative for our house. Yeah. So who who in the Harry Potter world is your favorite character? Um, it's always been Remus Lupin. I think he's a really really underrated character, and he means the world to me. Like everything that he represents. What is it that you, that drew you to him? Because you know, uh, you know, normally people will say like, "Oh, Harry, or Ron, Hermione, or maybe like Severus or Dumbledore." Yeah. Uh, but but Lupin's not one that's like he's definitely an underrated character, I think, and people appreciate him. Uh, but what what draws you to him specifically? I think because he's he's quite secretive for the, for the third book and film and all that. But he's just, he's always been a really nice person, even though he doesn't really feel that way about himself. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he tries to treat others better than he would himself. And I really respect him for everything he's had to go through in the story. Yeah, he's definitely one of those tragic characters with mm -hmm. everything that he's gone through from, like, losing Lily and James and thinking that Sirius was behind it all and... And then, you know, through through what we get to see of him at Hogwarts and with the Order and then with Tonks at the end. and Yeah. I mean, he lost his four best friends in one night and he's still, he's, he carried on and he's just such an inspiration for me. Would you consider him the best uh, Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher that they ever had? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not not that it's hard to not that it's hard to compare him against like you know Quirrell and and Lockhart and uh... I do like Lockhart. I mean, not as a teacher, but he's a good character <laughs> as well. Yeah, he's a fun character. <laughs> <laughs> what what uh what what book or movie is your favorite to either read or to watch, or is it different? Could it be like you have a favorite book and then you have a favorite movie? Um, my favorite book was always the third one. I think because you think it's over and then it goes with the whole let's go back in time and sort everything out thing. Mm -hmm. And I think with the films, it's probably the last one just because it's such a big ending for everything. Right. I, I'd like the third one as well. <laughs> yeah, my my favorite book is always uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. I just I like it just because it seems like that book has so much that affects everything in the next four books. Yeah. I think it's it's the only one without Voldemort being a looming threat over everyone. Mm -hmm. I think that's what drove me to it a bit. Yeah, and definitely the the last movie is just so like it's it's visually impressive. Like not yeah. to say that the other movies aren't, but by the time that that last you know the set of uh, book seven, uh, Deathly Hallows came out, is just so. They'd made so many improvements on stuff that they could do, and they just really showed it off between, like, the the, the story of the three brothers, yeah, uh, the Battle of Hogwarts, just all that stuff is really just fun to watch. Mm -hmm. What is, what, how do you feel about the, the new Fantastic Beasts movie? Do you like that? Is that something that you like? 
yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think a lot of people don't click with it and that's okay because it's not part of the original. But I think when you've got this much information about a world, you need to keep going with it. And it was good. I liked it. Are you excited that there's going to be another four movies coming out of it? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm really <laughs> excited to see the Dumbledore Grindelwald standoff as well. Like, been waiting for that for a while. It's going to be it's going to be fun and I like I like the characters that they got to develop for it because when I first saw the the promos and the trailers for it I, I wasn't really interested in it, but after watching it I fell in love with like Queenie and Jacob oh, yeah. um Newt especially uh Tina not so much I, I wasn't you know she she is how she is and I understand but yeah I, I definitely liked Queenie Queenie more so than Tina yeah I do like Queenie I think Jacob was really a fan favorite as well like an unexpected one Mm-hmm. but that was it was nice to see how a muggle or a nomad fit in with the world yeah, that that the the way that they handled things in America is totally different than what we had grown up with with Harry Potter and you know the England setting. Yeah, but it is definitely a lot of fun. It's definitely something I'm excited as they start releasing like casting uh, information for the new movie, and I, I'm excited to see where they go because, like, I I was talking to somebody. I was like, I wonder if they're even going to call it Fantastic Beasts because. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be about Fantastic Beasts? Is, is new going to be like doing stuff with Fantastic Beasts or creatures, or mm -hmm. what's he actually going to do? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I like I like how they they didn't really give much away before as well. And um, yeah, that part of it was filmed right by where I live as well. Oh, that's awesome! Like it was filmed at St George's Hall in Liverpool, and so like whenever I'd go passed on the bus or anything i always like try and peek around and see if they were there <laughs> are they are they filming there for uh the, the second movie or are they somewhere else this year i'm not sure i hope they come back but i, I think the next one's set in uh paris so i'm not sure oh, okay i don't know i'm trying to keep spoiler free oh sorry <laughs> Oh no no it's okay I'm just I'm not like I'm not like digging for for clues every time that they pop up I'll like I'll watch yeah. the trailer whenever they they make one but it's like I'm I I used to be super into I need to know everything give yeah. me all the spoilers and now I'm like I'll just wait until the movie comes out Yeah I like not knowing with these things like if it was a smaller thing it'd be fine but because it's such a big part I'm trying to keep to a minimum as well Mm-hmm. Definitely. Now, another fandom that you're into, and again, all based on off of your cosplay pictures, and uh is is Star Wars. Yeah. Now is did you did you watch the original Star Wars first? Did you watch the, the prequels first? Was it the cartoons first? Where like where did you get into Star Wars? Um well I watched the originals when I was really young, but I didn't really remember them, you know, until I got older and I started seeing more about it online. And mm -hmm. I I went back and I rewatched all of them again. And it was it was fun. Like I obviously one and two haven't been as well received as the others. Mm -hmm. But yep. I I didn't mind all of them. Like I thought they were all good in their own right. And then the the newest one, uh, Force Awakens, came out, and that's probably been my favorite so far. I know that it's not for a lot of people because they say it's like the fourth one reimagined, but I think it's a a new story, and I really like that one. Do you identify more with the characters from like the first six movies, or do you identify more with characters from like the Force Awakens, like? Uh, as far as, like, do you gravitate towards, like, Ray and Finn and Poe, or or do you go back to, like, Leia, Han, Luke, um, Padme, those those characters? Um, well, I, I do love Ray. Ray's probably my favorite character. 
and I, I love all of the new characters, but the original trilogy has, sorry, the the, the original trio is some, are some of my mm. favorites as well. Okay. What is it about Ray that you identify with so much? Because I know ever since The Force Awakens come has come out, like Ray is almost like that new standard bearer of um like female hero and as a character in the Star Wars universe back then it was only like Princess Leia and now we have Rey and Rey is definitely something that a lot of you know women are are gearing themselves towards and and really enjoy and glad to see her as like the the lead and everything that she's doing so what is it about her that you you find yourself drawn to? Um I think every every girl needs like a female hero. And so this is like a new generation's hero. Like you can have male heroes, but there's always something about the female heroes that you're going to relate to more as a girl. Mm -hmm. And I think Ray is just that it's just a newer version of Leia like if, if they went back and watched the originals I'm sure that Leia would be great too but because there's like this new generation coming into the fandom I feel like seeing this girl that can do almost everything just out of instinct is pretty cool definitely like she's definitely got some stuff that's going on where like her her powers are just right underneath the surface, but she's she's super strong in the force. She just sort of uses her head, so she's like she's strong with the force, but also just in her own mind as well. I think girls need that to look up to. Absolutely. Now, as we're talking, uh, we're recording this in October. And your episode that we're recording will, will come out shortly before uh, the next movie, The Last Jedi. So I, I'd like to ask, have you seen the trailer? I actually, I stayed up until like two in the morning so I could watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Because, you know, time difference. Yes. And I got my ticket directly after that. And you got your ticket. What, uh, what did you think about the trailer? I loved it. And I'm... I'm really loving the idea that Rey could go dark as well. Like you don't see many hero to villain transformations in films anymore. So you think Rey is going to go to the dark side? I'm not sure, but I, I like the idea of it. Okay. Well, was there any highlights of uh, of the trailer that you made you go like go crazy or like mouth open, shocked, or like what the heck? All of the effects in it. There was just. It was stunning. Like I, I didn't. I had to watch it a few times before I could really, you know, see everything that was in it. Yeah, it's definitely a. Uh, it was definitely a visual feast for the yeah. eyes. Just so much stuff going on, and I saw. I do go to the websites where they they try to go like frame by frame with the trailer yeah. to try and figure things out. And at one point, I just I just I just, I just said, you know, I I can't do this. I can't read. Where you're like looking in the background, trying to point, fit, like pick things out, but I'm I'm excited. There's a lot of I follow a lot of uh, different Star Wars uh, fans and podcasts online, and there's a lot of different theories floating around on like whose Ray parents could be, and and just I'm really excited to see if it gets answered in this movie. Yeah, totally. Which uh, and you said Force Awakens is your favorite movie, right? Yeah, pro I would say so. Do you have a favorite from uh, the others, like either uh, like Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith or Empire Strikes Back? I do like Revenge of the Sith. I think Empire Strikes Back is a favorite as well. If you could, if you could be a Jedi, would you be a Jedi? I hope so. Yeah, I I like the idea of it. I mean, it's a lot of training though, a lot of motivation. I don't think I'd I'd be a Jedi, but I don't think I, I agree more with what the Sith believe in, but I wouldn't be a Sith. Okay. Like Jedi's don't believe in love or, you know, anything like that. It just I feel like the Sith have a better idea of things. Okay. That's certainly understandable. Like they, they do have the the opinion that they 
they you know uh they they can just do what they want to do kind of and yeah. then but you know the just the the dark side is not the good stuff like no no. So you you could be like an 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 Anakin Jedi without going too dark. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. There you go. Without <laughs> you know, choking out Padme and yeah, no, breaking that her wasn't heart. a good memory. <laughs> yeah, that that wasn't a good plan. After um after Last Jedi, like I know that the next movie on deck is the the young Han Solo movie. Is are you interested in that at all? Are you are you not you are you you know, just you're not interested or not not interested. I think I am interested. Like I'll watch anything that Star Wars put out, but I, it needs to be a good story. I'm just worried that they'll like mess things up a bit. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure they'll do fine with everything. <laughs> yeah, that was when when Rogue One was coming out. I was kind I. I had grown up on like original Star Wars and all the the Star Wars books, and I was like, "What are they doing? I don't understand." And then, of course, when I saw the movie, I was blown away, and I was like, "This is exactly what a Star Wars movie needs to be." Yeah. And I I really hope with whatever story that they're going to do with Han Solo, um, obviously, like it's going to have Han and Chewie and uh, Lando in it. So yeah. I'm excited to see what what they do with that. Yeah. Yeah, I hope they'll, like, include how Han and Chewie met, maybe, or, you know, some sort of origin story for that. Yeah, I'd definitely like to see that. I'd love to—I hope that they have a lot of uh, Han and Lando just oh, interactions yeah. or, like, whether they're antagonizing each other or working together or forced to work together. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah, I, I like Lando. I think he's a fun character, so hopefully— they they can bring that that sense of of you know what Lando brought to Empire and to Return of the Jedi. I hope they can bring that to this mm -hmm. new movie. So with you being in England, you get access to some shows that sometimes we get on BBC America. Yeah. Uh, but they're not really well known. Yeah. And uh, you had written down on the pre-show questionnaire stuff that I send over that uh, two of them that you really, really enjoy were Merlin and Atlantis. And I've heard of Merlin, but I haven't heard of Atlantis before. Yeah, Atlantis sort of came out after Merlin had finished. Um, yeah, I, I prefer Merlin, but Atlantis was fun too. What's Atlantis about? Is it about the, the lost continent of Atlantis? Yeah, so there's um, this dude called Jason who goes looking for his dad. And he ends up in Atlantis. It's very like old Greek style. It's really fun. Okay. What 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 was it about Atlantis that uh, that you enjoyed about it? Uh, I'll watch any cheesy show that the BBC puts out. <laughs> 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 like um, with Merlin and Doctor Who, I've always been a fan of them, so I thought that. This would be great too, and yeah, it's classic BBC. <laughs> How many is Atlantis over now, or is it still going on? I'm not sure actually. It's been a while since I last saw it. Oh okay. Like I've been watching, been watching it over again, but yeah, I think it's all been about Doctor Who recently. Okay, and then with Merlin. Merlin of the King Arthur and Camelot stories. Yeah. It's one of my favorite shows that they've ever done. Really? Why is that? I don't know. I started watching it when it first came out, and I was like, I think I was like 10 or something. And it was just a really good way to relax on a Saturday night. And then it just kept going, and it got deeper and darker, and it was really funny. And I'm pretty sure I cried when it was over, so that's how much I loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Did you have, a, like, a favorite character or favorite storyline in Merlin that really just, uh, that you were drawn to? I, I loved, I've always loved the Arthurian legends, and I'd always wanted to be, like, a knight or something, I think. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. it was just... Yeah, I like the idea of that with the magic coming in and 
it was funny and yeah i liked it okay Ooh, merlin is the show that had uh the person from buffy the vampire slayer in it as a uh... Um, who is it? Let's see here. I'm trying to get his name real quick. Um, as I think it's Uther Pendragon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Stewart Head. Yeah. He was fun. Okay. I think I've seen, seen bits and pieces of it, but I've not seen a lot more. But I know that, uh, Arthur and Guinevere, a lot of people, like, really dug. Yeah. Dug seeing them yeah. on the screen. Okay. I'll have to check that out because that's definitely I I love stuff like that. Like I love European history and the Arthurian Arthur I think Arthurian yeah. legends, tales. Tales of the Round Table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I love that type of stuff. I'll have to check it out because it looks like it's over. Um it looks like it ran four se four or five seasons. Okay. Uh and then Mer uh Atlantis. I wonder how let me look up that real quick. Atlantis, BBC. Yeah, Atlantis has been canceled by the BBC, it says. I don't know how long ago that was. Uh, it looks like it ran for two years, maybe. Oh, that's good. Then that means I'm up to date on it. So definitely, if people are listening, you would recommend them, they check them out. Yeah, definitely. It's just, it's easy watching. So you don't, you don't really need to pay much attention to it, but when you do, it's great, and you can really get stuck in with it. Now, I wanted to ask, because, um, again, you're in England, and therefore you have BBC and you have Doctor Who. Yeah. And you uh, you had recommended that uh, you think that people should watch Doctor Who, uh, and then... You know, the announcement was made earlier this year that the new doctor is actually going to be uh, a woman, which every, uh, at least in my circle of friends, a lot of people are very excited about. Oh, that's cool. But I know that, I know that the internet, some of the people on the internet are not happy about yeah. that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of negative reactions to it because it's not like realistic, which I don't know how a show about an alien, you know, fighting space and that is realistic in the first place it's just <laughs> fun to watch like yeah yeah i saw i saw one thing come out and it's like i i asked for a doctor not a nurse and it's like really yeah like that that's the line you're gonna go with is i asked for a doctor and not a nurse as if there's not you know male nurses or uh female uh doctors yeah. and it's, it's just it's mind-blowing sometimes that the way that uh, it's it's portrayed and people are on the internet like just ranting and raving about it. It's just mind boggling. Yeah. I mean, if people aren't into that, don't watch it. You know, it's it's 2017. It's time to get over the small things like that. Absolutely. And what what do you want to see when they have the the new doctor like is there anything specific that you would love to see her do as opposed to like you know the previous incarnations of the doctor or just would you like to see her just continue as the doctors have been i'd like to see her just continue and like i think any big change would be like they're trying to make it for the feminists or whatever but if they just carry it on it it's the same show. It's not going to change massively. Right. It's just attitudes that might change towards it, which is a great thing. Definitely. And and hopefully, you know, with something as big as, like, Doctor Who with a female doctor or Star Wars with Rey as that primary character, I, I hope that it can continue this trend of, you know equal or better than what it's been in the past where it's been not so much you know i mean if they can improve bits of it that's great but it's just changing people's minds and helping them see that it's not a big deal definitely it's definitely something where um hopefully like our generation or the younger generation like this is this is the time where things start changing for the better with like this kind of like uh TV shows and movies and books and I I think like 
again, my my social circle, it seems like I'm seeing that change. Yeah. But again, slowly. It's not not as fast as people want, but I don't know if they could if they could actually do it as fast as people want. But the you know, these are big steps that are happening. Yeah. I mean, like I said before, girls need the female role model to look up to, but there's no reason that uh, boys can have that as well. Like, absolutely, strong females need to be represented. That is that is definitely uh, correct, and not and as you said, it's not like it's not like uh, boys can't look up to them because I know that my two sons, uh, they definitely dig. Uh, like female like main characters yeah. or they're uh, excuse me they're they're drawn to they're drawn to some of those characters and it doesn't matter like i i support whatever they want to watch as long as they're enjoying watching yeah. it and then but yeah it's definitely where i just want i want them to be able to grow up and be like okay you know i have my role models and it doesn't matter who they are as long as they they aspire to be better yeah as long as they're a good person, they shouldn't matter what gender they are. Exactly. Now, again, like I talked before, as we started the, the recording and Facebook was so kind to show me your uh, cosplay page on Facebook, uh, you are a cosplayer. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been cosplaying for? Um, I went to my first convention in 2013 and I started making costumes a year after that. So be about three years. Okay. What was it about, uh, like your first convention or uh, getting like to to start kicking you off with uh, cosplay? Like, what was it that just motivated you to start doing this? Uh, the first time I went, I didn't go with a cosplay, and I felt a little bit like out of place. It was. Yeah, it was big and I didn't know what was going on and I thought I'd, I'd just go as I was to see what it was like for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, okay, next year I need to make something <laughs> to fit in here. And <laughs> yeah, I, I've made my Hawkeye jacket the year after that. I've been making one for every con I go to. Okay. Uh, what... Uh... When you decide to do a cosplay, do you do it more on like that you like the character? Is it more that you like the the outfit or is it like a combination of both? I think I go by character and then pick the ones that the costumes that I like of theirs most. Mm -hmm. Like I'd always wanted to do the Yule Ball dress, but I didn't I didn't know how at first. So I tried doing a smaller Hermione costume first because I I love Hermione and I wanted to be her. But it's always a character I like. Is it uh, like with the Yule Ball dress, was there any reasoning behind it or just that you wanted to represent like that version? Uh, because that's that dress is, you know, it's it's definitely stunning and but again, I don't see it that often as far as with Harry Potter characters. Uh, no, I don't see a lot of Yule Ball dresses. I do see, you know, the the, the wizarding yeah. robes or like I, I've seen Luna's outfit a few different yeah. times, like her different range of outfits. But I, I think you're the first person I've seen a Yule Ball dress from with Hermione. Um, I think I've, I've seen a few on Instagram, but there's not many there. So I thought I'd have a go of it, and it turned out pretty great for me. How long did it take for you to make it? Um, well, I'm in university, so it's been like, it had been in the evenings and that, but it, I started in January, and I think I finished it the day before the con in July. <laughs> <laughs> Working all the way up until... Like, I, I didn't have like a pattern or anything, so it was all just wing it and hope for the best <laughs> it well it turned out really well like it Thank looks you. great um 
And I'm I'm so happy that you went with with the book version as far as the color goes. Every uh, few minutes walking around the convention, it was I just heard people saying, "Oh my god, it's the right color!" <laughs> it is. It right. is the right color. I'm I'm you know I I say again, I'm just I'm happy that you went the book version just because I think it's just so it, it just fits the character and I really like I like it a lot better than uh, what was represented in the movie. I, I like the pink, I think, but I've always wondered what the blue would look like. And so I thought, I'll try making it. And you've also done a Ray cosplay. I started making that as soon as Force Awakens came out. Like, has there been any issues with the Ray cosplay as far as, like, getting material or any any design issues? Or is it relatively, like, a straightforward costume? I think it's probably the most straightforward one I've done so far. Like, it's just, I bought everything, I altered what needed to, to be altered, which wasn't that much. I've just, I've mm -hmm. kept the same for quite a while. And it's, it's worked out. Yeah, and it looks, it looks like a, a very comfortable cosplay. It really is. Like, the dress is, is great, but when you have to sit down in it or, you know, eat food or anything, it's really hard. So the Ray one is great for a relaxing day. Absolutely. And you said you did a, a Hawkeye jacket? Yeah. Um, I built around a leather jacket for that one. Because Hawkeye okay. was my favorite character at that time. Like, I, I just loved him so much. And I, I had to have help with that one because it was my first one. But it turned out really cool. And I see that, let's see here, you've done Bucky from Captain America. Yeah, I, I love Bucky. <laughs> And uh, Wanda, Scarlet Witch, again, uh, Age of Ultron version. Mm. I love Marvel. And Tonks. You love Marvel? Yeah. That's so crazy. Marvel. Are you looking forward to uh, to Thor coming out? Yeah, really, really excited. Mostly for the Hulk, though, I think. <laughs> I've really wanted a Hulk film for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited. They they just had um, an interview I read with Mark Ruffalo, and he said that the Hulk's uh, story in in uh, Thor kicks off like a three part story amongst like the next oh, couple really? movies. Like that's really cool. Yeah, it starts off in Thor, and then uh, Avengers: Affinity War. He'll have like another part of the story there. And then wrap up in like Avengers Four, whatever they're gonna call that movie. That's really cool. So I'm I'm excited because I love I love the Hulk. I love Mark Ruffalo. He's yeah. so he's such a good a good person to play that role of Bruce Banner and the Hulk. And I, I'm excited to see where they go with it, especially with how they've they've positioned uh, Hulk for this mo like for Thor with. Uh, some of the storyline from like World War Hulk and whatnot. Yeah, but I I'm excited beyond belief for it. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to Black Panther as well. Oh, definitely! That movie looks so good. Mm. And I'm I'm ho kind of hoping that Bucky will have a cameo in that as well. Yeah, that would be really nice. Like maybe at the end or at the like the little teaser bit set in the at, like during the credits. That would be cool. Now, are you working on any other cosplays at, at this moment for, for upcoming conventions or anything else that's going um, on? I'm making... I've got it laying out on my floor here as well. I'm making a Daphne costume from Scooby-Doo for Halloween. Awesome. I'm making a Tariel costume, but I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that yet. Okay, from Lord of the Rings, right? From the Hobbit movies. Yeah. And... I'm probably going to go out soon and get more material for the the Ray costume at the end of the Force Awakens. Okay. So hopefully that would be done for Last Jedi. Oh, you gotta you gotta work fast on that one. Hopefully, that's what two that's two months away, and you already have your tickets. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, it's gonna be gonna be an exciting uh exciting uh. December with all the stuff going on, yeah. especially with Star Wars. <laughs> now, out of curiosity, why did you pick uh, Daphne from Scooby Doo? Um, 
Well, it was my favorite TV show when I was a kid, and mm-hmm. I I've, I've been rewatching a lot of it recently. So I thought, I don't have a Halloween costume yet. Why don't I do that? And it's been I I, I don't know how to make this dress, so <laughs> it's really been winging it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I love I love Scooby Doo when I was growing up, um, even into like my high school years yeah. and college and everything. Is always one of those shows where you could just watch it and it's just so uh, like you don't have to pay attention, but it's just got so much just fun stuff going on in it. Yeah. And of course, the the movies are good too. Like I I I like the movies. I think I've only seen like the first two. I I think they maybe made another yeah. one, but. You know, I, I really dug those. They were fun. Yeah. I mean, I I loved all of the characters, but I think Daphne was like a standout for me because she was, she like, she cared about how she looked, but she was also really clever and not many people realize that. I think mm-hmm. so. I, I went with her, but <laughs> I, yeah. Now... For those people who are listening to this podcast and they would like to see your pictures uh, of your cosplays or follow you, uh, what are some of the best places for them to do that? Um, I have my Instagram and my Facebook, which are both called Astro Planeta. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I put a, some of it on my Twitter, but not much. All right, so for your Instagram, and I, I, I have it written down. I'll put in the show notes, uh, Just but for those who are listening, your Instagram is Astra and then underscore and then Planeta. And then on your Facebook, it's Astra Planeta Cosplay. Yes. And you'll be able to get to, to follow Becky as she progresses through her, her cosplays and uh, shows you off what what she's done, and she's got some really great stuff. And of course, definitely check out the Yule Ball dress uh, for Hermione, the the blue one, not the <laughs> pink one. And make sure to uh, like her Facebook page because that also helps. Well, then I just have to say again, thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to talk with me because I know that you've got stuff going on over over there across the ocean. So thank you so much for your time because it is a lot of fun. And I, I just always enjoy getting to talk to people from all over. Thank you for having me. It's been really fun. I've never really done anything like this. So, well, I'm glad that I could, could be the first person to, to get to record with you. And hopefully maybe after this, some other people will hear it and be like, Oh, I want to talk to her too. And then, then you'll just, continue to grow and have people talking about your your awesome cosplays and and all this other stuff and then hopefully if i ever get to watch merlin or atlantis i'll send you a message and be like i watched it yeah thank you for listening to tales from the fandom subscribe to us on itunes or your podcast app of choice follow us on facebook at www.facebook.com slash tales from the fandom to see photos, links, leave feedback, and check out upcoming guests. If you'd like to be a guest, email david at talesfromthefandom at gmail.com.